Hey guys, Caitlin here, and for this week's YouTube video, I wanted to talk about the emergent need for dialysis in the emergency department. Um, but first, I just want to give you guys a little update on how my fellowship is going. So I started my fellowship in November of last year, so it's been about seven months. Um, about a month ago, I started applying for jobs, and I must say that I haven't... Um, even thought about the process of it before then and I started about a month ago blindly applying um, and I must say that I wouldn't even have gotten a couple of interviews if it wasn't for the fellowship um, and I can say that straight up and during the interview process many people didn't even want to talk about anything else other than my fellowship they were just so um, awed by it they wanted to hear about it um, and now I must officially say that I have a job after my fellowship. So I'm super excited about that. I wanted to give you guys an update for that. Um, and just say that everyone was in awe about my fellowship during the interview process. And um, now I officially am a big, huge proponent of fellowships, um, especially if you want to specialize in a certain area after PA school. So... Enough about that, let's talk about the emergent needs for dialysis in the emergency department. So, hemodialysis can be the treatment for many different things, um, more than just end-stage renal patients that come in that have maybe missed dialysis for whatever reason. Um, and I just wanted to summarize that today because it's commonly seen in the emergency department and memorizing this little mnemonic that we have is really helpful and the mnemonic is A-E-I-O-U so it's just all the vowels and it stands for um, acidosis, electrolytes, ingestions, overload, and uremia. So acidosis is the first one I want to talk about, and that is simply measured by a CG4 venous blood glass or um, arterial blood glass if you're awesome like that, and um, you want to just look at the pH, so the normal pH of blood is 7.4. If you have a pH of blood that's less than 7.2, that is an emergent need for dialysis. Um, so consider that in some patients that for whatever reason causes acidosis, metabolic or respiratory, um, that is an emergent need for um, dialysis and especially if it's refractory to your initial resuscitative measures. E is the next one and that stands for electrolytes and mostly this is referring to hyperkalemia because in end-stage renal disease you get very high potassiums and that's very dangerous and cause very weird arrhythmias and a potassium over 6.5 is very dangerous but sometimes in end-stage renal disease patients their potassium stays at that height so um, they are very used to that and it can reach heights up to 9. So if you have hyperkalemia you obviously wanted to do your initial resuscitative measures of insulin D50, um, albuterol, Lasix. If you're particularly worried or they have EKG changes, you definitely want to do um, calcium and or bicarb. And then um, if they especially have EKG changes, then that is an emergent need for dialysis. Um, so keep that in mind as well. But first, in the emergency department, just remember you want to temporize it first before you can get them up to dialysis. The I stands for ingestion. So this is more acute cases of kidney failure. Um, so an overdose on someone's medication, such as lithium, it's going to be medications that get filtered out through and excreted through the kidney. Um, so the kidney is just overloaded with all of this certain medication um, and it goes in acute kidney injury. And so um, if you have an overdose of certain medications like um, salicylates, uh, lithium, the toxic alcohols like methanol or ethylene glycol and other medications like carbamazepine, you are going to need emergent dialysis as well. So that is another indication for emergent dialysis in the emergency department. O, which stands for overload, it most often means pulmonary overload. Um, in kidney failure, you just cannot circulate all that fluid in your body and it gets built up in our lungs, causing severe respiratory distress. So um, you want to temporize these patients with um, nitrates and or Lasix, but if their pulmonary edema is so severe, that is a need for emergent dialysis as well. 
U, which stands for uremia, is another common complication of acute kidney failure or chronic kidney failure. And um, if your patient is symptomatic from high uremic levels in their body, um, this can cause um, cerebral uremia so or uremic encephalopathy. So they could be confused. They can have seizures. Um, they can have uremic pericard pericarditis. Um, they can have intractable nausea and vomiting. Um, many different things. So if your patient is symptomatic from their uremia, that is another need for immersion dialysis. That's it, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, try to remember this mnemonic for the emergent needs for dialysis because a lot of um, dialysis patients will frequent your emergency department for complications um, of just health thereof. And um, if you remember the emergent needs for dialysis versus the more routine needs for dialysis, um, that will definitely expedite your care and um, disposition of each patient. Um, and that's it. Thanks for listening. See you guys next week.